We haven't quite hit summer yet, but last summer was the hottest summer ever on record here in the Valley. Those soaring temps appear to be taking a toll on one of Arizona's most iconic plants, the saguaro cactus. A group of journalists from ASU sustainability documentary class brings us the story of the sweltering saguaros. I think for people who live in Phoenix, it really is part of our connection to place this iconic plant. It's a very visual kind of, you know, very charismatic plant. Uh, you know, everybody associates the desert with the saguaro. You say Arizona and everybody does this, right? And mimicking a saguaro. That's the cultural identity. That's been the cultural identity for hundreds of years. And experts say a major sprouting event hasn't been seen in decades. Is it so hot out here? Not even the cactuses are surviving. Take a look. This is video of a cactus that fell right on a house in Phoenix. My name is uh, Aaron Sabori, and we're out here in the Sierra Australia. This is uh, where I grew up hunting. There was a, a man by the name of Sylvester Matthias. He's the one that showed, actually showed me how to start working with this kind of uh, material. And there's a long process to go before I can start cutting them, but I use a, 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 a silversmith saw to cut them, the circles, squares, whatever I'm gonna cut out of it, and I do it just about the same as a silversmith does, except it's wood. And it splits a little bit different, but it's, it's really, a, a, really a, a beautiful wood to work with. The Tohono O'odham and other indigenous groups, they respect and utilize the saguaros in every stage of its life, and they, they use it, the, the ribs are used for structures, they eat the fruits, they make wine from the fruits. But one of my most favorite, favorite things to do is to pick bahitach, the fruit of the saguaro cactus, and it happens every summer, and it's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Our plants are not acting like they used to. Before, you could tell when you get ready to plant. We used to pick in July. We would, we could always bank on it being done, uh, Fourth of July weekend being out there picking. Our physical new year starts around June, but it, it has to do with the harvesting of the saguaro plant. We harvest and then we have a, a wine festival that we use to call the monsoons, and that's how the rain comes and stuff like that. And so when we're not able to do that on a regular basis like that, then it throws us off too. Fruits already have been gone, but this is a small piece of one. It's dry right now, and when we pick them, this is what we're looking for on the very top and we compete with the birds out here to get to the, the very juicy part, the pulp of it. And sometimes you can find them laying down here where we can just pick them up and eat them and it's just, it's like candy. The bidach or the, the fruit of the saguaro is now growing on the side of the saguaros. And that didn't used to happen and that's scary. And I know when the old people, the old ladies would see it, they would just cry because they knew something was changing. And it has to do with the weather, a lot of it. We've experienced twice now in only the space of a few years in 2020 and 2023 is significantly less rainfall in the summer which is a critical period for rain. The Hoshino de Saguaro there's been a disease that's been getting at them and now you can see the effects of what happens we're losing some really big ones here and it affects us because there's no more fruit we're going to be getting off of this one. When you have too little water then the tissues can, can actually weaken. This summer, 2023, the National Weather Service, they categorized the amount of monsoon rain that we received as trace amounts. Climate change is, is, is having effect. The timing or the intensity of, of our rains. We can't really determine when we're gonna go pick something anymore because it's not, it's, they're not acting the same way. We did our survey last year here on the hill, uh, we found like three or four individuals that had flowers. 
total, like out of 4,000 saguaro. <laughs> For example, in July, there was a run of 16 nights where the temperature did not go below 90 degrees. And if you go back 50 or 100 years, the high overall <laughs> <laughs> was 96. In the 1930s, there were all these tall, it was almost like a forest of saguaros. And now that same area, there's 90% fewer large, mature plants out there. For me, when they fall like this, basically I use what is down here, and that's the base of it. The base is a lot bigger, a lot wider, so when I split it, I can go ahead and get my jewelry out of it. This is where we get our walking sticks out of this, and our story sticks can come out of this also. Because I'm an artist, I, I, I see things and I'll create out of it. And so this right here is, is really a treasure trove for me. Somebody like me, I'm looking at it and I'm already thinking about what I can do with maybe the arms and things like that, you know. But it's a, it's a protected plant on the reservation, but also in Arizona. But it's just sad to see that this big majestic saguaro just laying here. We don't watch out for the saguaro and try to find out why this uh, disease is killing it. Then we won't have these left and everything that's sustainable to that is not gonna survive. Over a hundred other animal species rely on saguaros at some point in their life cycle, whether that's feeding on the nectar in the flowers or feeding on the pollen or eating the juicy fruits. All of those species, the impacts are very direct. We lose the big saguaros, we lose those birds. So the largest saguaro um, in my yard, it's in my front yard, it collapsed. It was just speechless and I was staring at it and just thinking, no, no. But we're fortunate too because we've got a little guy right here and he looks very healthy and you can see how he's covered in thorns completely. So it's a lot harder for the animals to get to him. We're not doing a good job. <laughs> we're not doing a good job of taking care of uh, Mother Earth. And if we don't do a good job, then why should she even give us fruits to harvest? Why should, she, why should she take care of us if we're not taking care of her? Jason, can you get out of the shop, please? Oh. What, what kind of art are you, are you working on? What's your theme? Go one hand, please. Uh, it looks like it's... Obviously, heat impacted. It's old. Hey, Jason, you're at, you're in the shop, bro. No, no, bro.